Right. If you would, turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, we're going to look at verses 1 through 9 today. So if you haven't noticed, we're talking about God's promises in today's service. Do you know that God has promised never to leave nor forsake his children? Now listen to that last piece of it. His children. God has promised never to leave nor forsake his children. And you know, in, in remembering that, when we have these trials, when we have these struggles in life, God calls us to be strong and very courageous in the midst of it. And it's because we know that God is with us always. He will never leave nor forsake us. And as we remember that, to be strong and courageous, it is important for us to meditate upon God's word, to really know God's words, to, re to look at all the promises that he has given us and obey. Obey God. And as we remember him, as we go through life, re remember that God is faithful. You might be going through a valley right now. You might be going through a struggle right now. You see, like, there's no way out of it. But remember that God is faithful. So in Joshua 1, 1 through 9, we're going to look at how God has been faithful to Israel despite their disobedience. So Joshua 1, 1 through 9 says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. All the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this word today. I thank you as we look at history as we look at how you were with Israel through the whole time, Lord, and that those promises that you made that we can trust your promises because we know that you cannot lie, Lord. And I pray that you just help us today as we look at the challenges ahead for Israel and being able to apply those things to our own life and realizing that there are going to be challenges ahead, Lord, and that you are going to be with us in all, that we can be strong and very courageous because you are with us always lord and i pray you just open our hearts to receive your word today lord and just guide us in all things in jesus name i pray amen so god's promises here as the story starts off in joshua israel has been wandering the desert for 40 years they have been disobedient and for 40 years they had one leader moses and now Moses is dead. So times are really starting to change for them. And it's very important to look here at who took over for Moses. It was Joshua, Moses' assistant. Moses had really discipled Joshua. He had trained him up to take over. And that's in a very important part of the church is disciple the next generation. To disciple people to step in when ultimately somebody is either going to pass away or step out of a particular role. And here Moses is dead. He was no longer going to be able to lead Israel any longer, but Joshua was able to come in equipped. And if you look after even the time after Joshua, Joshua a little bit failed because he didn't train someone to come after him, did he? And there was the time of the judges. So we had a lot of stuff going on there. So it's very important to be discipled. But we also see that Joshua didn't just choose to be the leader of Israel. God called him there. And just the same, God calls us into many roles in our own life, in our own church, in our own families. But Joshua also had to respond to God's call. And again, that's the same thing for us. So God has called you to something purposely. And, you know, no one else is going to step into this role that God had set aside for Joshua. So Joshua responded to it. And here is Israel standing before the promised land. 
they're at the Jordan. So they could have gotten the promised land really quick when they got out of Egypt. But what held them back? Disobedience. Disobedience, the promised land. Think about what that's called, the promised land. Here's God's promises. So he had promised he was going to give it to the nation of Israel. So it was good as done. God was going to do it. But you see, it wasn't in their timing. And in their disobedience, they didn't receive the blessings that God had already stored up for them. You know, are there any blessings that maybe we're not receiving right now because we've been disobedient to him? You know, it's impossible to, it's impossible to please God without faith, isn't it? You have to trust God. You have to trust God even when you are in those valleys. Even whatever situation you're in, you have to trust God. You know, when Israel saw that there were great people that were equipped in that promised land, they were afraid. They did not want to go into the promised land. They were like, there's no way we're going to be able to take that promised land. So they were disobedient to God. And, you know, there may be things ahead of you that you're like, there is no way that I could do that. But God is with you. You can do it through God. So it's impossible to please him without faith. And even now, 40 years later, it really, the situation hadn't gotten any better. Israel was not really an army so much. And those cities they were going into were fortified cities. They had nice walls. You know, there's one particular you're going to see pretty soon in Jericho. Nice walls around. They had chariots. They had whatever the state-of-the-art weapons were. There was no AK-47s back then, so at least they were in that regard. But So there was, they were ready. The other people were ready, those enemies. And that's all they saw was the danger there. And the fact that God said, go over there. I, yeah. Over there? You're sure about that now? You know, it might be a, a little village over here that we can take. But there was danger ahead. They looked ahead at that. At that. But look at verse 5. And here's the core of it. He says in verse 5, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. So he's talking particularly to Joshua, but as the leader of Israel here. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So here is the aspect of going into that battle, going into that challenge there, is that God is with you. God is going to be with Joshua. God is going to be with Israel. God is going to be with the church as we go forward. As we face challenges, it seems impossible there. And in Hebrews chapter 13, the writer of Hebrews actually quoted this passage about never leaving nor forsaking you. And what he's really talking about was really being content in what you have, content in your situations. And, you know, whenever we have good things going on in our life, it's easy to be content. But when we do struggle, maybe it's with sickness, maybe it is with finances, maybe it's even mental things, anxiety, depression, whatever those situations may be, are we thinking back to the fact that God is with us? That's why we can be content, again, because God is alongside us there. So that promise that he will never leave nor forsake you. I started to think about some of the different promises that God has given us. Man, I could do a whole year's worth of sermons on promises. You realize that God has promised us much. He'll never leave nor forsake you. There's a lot loaded right into that, that God is right there with you. You know, the psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What does he say? I'm going to fear evil. I will fear no evil because God's with me. God is protecting me. He is that good shepherd wa watching over us no matter what the situation. That's a promise. God will never leave for nor forsake us. God has also promised that those that come to Jesus Christ will be forgiven of their sins. He doesn't put any limits on that. He doesn't say, well, if you've done these sins, there's no way that you can be saved. God says anyone, whosoever cometh to him. So whoever goes to Jesus, he has promised that forgiveness is there. Salvation, the fact that we can live in eternity with God. He has also promised for Christians that the Holy Spirit is going to be dwelling within us. God is in us. God will never leave nor forsake us because he's in us. He's there with us at all times, helping guide our thoughts, helping us become more and more like Christ. And you know, when we become Christians, we're not perfect. We do still have struggles. There's different temptations. All of us have different things that the, the enemy is going to try to use against us in the ways of temptations. But you realize in those temptations that God always gives us a way out. There is a choice not to fall into those temptations. Sometimes it's being smart and not putting ourselves around the, around the wrong people. Sometimes it's being smart and putting ourselves around the right people, isn't it? There's always a way out of these different temptations. So don't make an excuse just because you're not perfect that you can just keep doing the same things over and over again. God has promised to be with you. 
The Holy Spirit is going to guide us and make us more and more like Christ. And God also has promised us the whole armor of God. Paul tells us to put that on. That armor is ready for us to put on. Put on that belt of truth. Who is truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Each day, it's like the Roman soldiers, they basically had like long robes. They had to pull up with their belts there. And you know what? If you didn't have that long robe pulled up when you went into battle, you'd trip on it. And you'd probably get killed. And you know, that's the same thing every day as we walk out. God has promised to give us that belt of truth. Are we going to buckle it up? Are we going to take up those loose ends? Because we all have loose ends. Or are we going to trip up on it today? Are we trusting God? Putting on that belt of truth. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Realizing that in obedience to God, our heart is covered. Where does the devil want to get you at? In your heart. Absolutely. And you know, if you're disobedient, if you're allowing sins into your life, you could be sure that your heart is exposed. And the devil is going to manipulate you. He wants to make you more like Christ. Now, how about our feet shod with the gospel of peace? That's the aspect of understanding who we are in God. Our feet, it's like cleats. If you play football or, or baseball, you have cleats to stand firm. And those Roman soldiers had cleats to stand firm in the battle. Stand firm on the promises of God each day. Taking up the shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one. There, we are trusting who God is, aren't we? We're taking up that shield of faith, trusting that he's going to be with us. And it says all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Whatever it is that the enemy is firing at us, take up that shield of faith. And that's not talking about faith of being saved, but every day just trusting God. Taking up that shield of faith. And putting on the helmet of salvation. I think that one is so important because many of us go through life and doubt our salvation. We doubt that God has really done what he's promised to do, don't we? We doubt that Jesus really did everything for us. But you put on that helmet of salvation because, again, the enemy wants to get in our minds. He wants to make us doubt our salvation. He wants to wreck our lives. He can't have us, but, boy, is he a sore loser. Putting on that helmet of salvation and then taking up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God's Word. And you know what? Just having one verse is not what you need. You need God's Word as a whole to be able to face these battles. And that's offensive and defensive with that sword. So these are promises that God has given us. He's equipped us to be able to face these battles. And you know, with the Holy Spirit as well, when we're praying, you ever get to the point where you feel like you just don't know what to pray? You know, you're struggling through things and you don't know how to communicate with God. Well, God has promised in those times that the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us. That He is speaking for us when we don't even understand. God knows exactly what we need. And also the aspect of Jesus. He's there in heaven being basically like a lawyer for us. He's interceding for us because you know what the devil is constantly doing. He says, look what David did today. David is not yours. Look what David did. But you know what Jesus is saying? I know his heart. I know who he is. And I know that we're going to bring him out of this. We're going to restore him. God has promised to be there. Jesus is interceding for us every day. And as we go out into the world, as we witness to people, you realize that God has promised to give us the words to speak. God has equipped us to be able to speak truth to those around us. And God has promised that death is not the end. What a promise is that? We are, again, a people of hope there. Death is not the end. Heaven awaits us. And you realize that one day resurrection awaits us. That we will have new bodies to be reunited with our souls that have been with God. Wow. New heaven, new earth. All these are promises of God. And God cannot lie. So you know what? Any of these promises are as good as done. Are you trusting that? Are you trusting that? Whenever you are faced with difficult situations. Look at verse 7 here. In verse 7 it says, Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Be strong there. Be strong and very courageous. Because here it is, we're looking back to God's promises. This is why we can be strong and very courageous. There is a task, there is a challenge ahead of each one of us. Here Israel was standing on the Jordan. They saw that task ahead of them. They saw those challenges ahead of them. And they surely were fearful in their, in their flesh. 
But God, again, is just reminding them, remember my promises. I'm with you always. So be strong and very courageous. And, you know, they have their new leader now, Joshua. No longer Moses with them. They knew that Moses had been right there alongside with God. And perhaps they trusted Moses in a way because God was with them, even though they were disobedient very often that. But you realize Joshua leading Israel into Jericho, into the promised land, it wasn't in Joshua's strength. You realize that? It was absolutely in the fact that God's presence was with them. That's why they were going to have the victory there. God is glorified in the weak things of the world. Did you know that? You may have heard people say before, God's never going to give you a task that you can't do. Well, you know, that sounds a lot, a lot of self in that. Actually, God will give us tasks that we cannot do because God's going to do it. God's going to be glorified in that. When, the, when Israel started going into the promised land, those people, even though Israel was not a big army, they were fearful because they knew that God was with Israel. They were fearful. God was the one that was going to bring the victory, not those puny people, not us, no matter how weak we are. You know, in 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about that when I am weak, then I am strong because I'm strong in you. He's relying upon God. He's submitting to God. He's allowing God's grace to really equip him in all things. The definition of being strong. So being strong and very courageous is able to withstand force and pressure. I don't know why this occurred to me when I was thinking about this, but think about a pickle jar. Stay with me. <laughs> Trying to open a pickle jar. Do you ever feel like some of that times that pickle jar is the one that's strong? That pickle jar is the one that's able to withstand force and pressure there you got to be stronger to open it up there. That, you know, strength, to be able to withstand whatever the pressures of life are, whatever these challenges are that are coming for us. Another way to say it is that we are established and not easily shaken, not easily moved. You remember when our feet were shod with the gospel of peace? We're not being moved in this battle, even though the enemy is going to strike back at us in many different ways. Be strong. Remember who God is. Remember God's promises that God's in control there. And be courageous, not deterred. Do not turn back from anything. Don't be turning back from the dangers ahead. Don't be turning back from the pain ahead. Think about all the martyrs throughout the centuries. People that were willing to be burnt at the stake rather than denounce God. And even now in the Middle East, people that are beheaded because they will not denounce God. Do you think that they are strong and very courageous? Do you think that they trust God's promises that death is not the end? That God is in control? Boy, you know what? We here in America, we got it good. Persecution's all around in the world. And sometimes we just get offended by words like, oh, no, we need to be strong and very courageous. Even in the darkness that's around us there. Be obedient to God. See, he says, be obedient to him. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Stay right on that straight way. Don't let these things into your life that's going to wreck your life. And you are going to have promises that are guaranteed. There are good things that are coming to you when you stay in the will of God. Stay in the will of God. So, we've got to remember God's promises. We've got to be strong and very courageous in it. And now, here he's in verse 8. He's talking about thinking about God's word. This book of the law. So here it was Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's the Pentateuch. But this is the whole canon of the Bible really would fall into this as well. That we need to remember the book of the law. So God's word shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. I'm not talking about getting riches here. I'm not talking about getting all the things we want in the flesh, but prosperous and good success because we're being obedient to God. We are in His will. And sometimes being in His, in His will is to suffer for the glory of God. To spread the word around. So as we meditate upon His word, so read it. Read the Bible. We live in such an age, you have your Bible on your phone. You can have your Bible in your car. Reading to you as you're writing somewhere. The Bible is very accessible to us. All these different notes we have, all these different studies we have. But boy, do we not read our Bibles. It's true. We have many Bibles in our house. But are we reading it? Are we being fed 
by God's word every day to be ready for this battle. So read about it and think about it. Meditate upon it. You know, in the Eastern re religion, they talk a lot about meditating. You know, you've probably seen people do like this. Well, their goal is to empty their minds. I'm afraid we already have a lot of empty-headed people <laughs> in the world. The goal is not to empty our minds with meditating upon God's word. It's to fill our minds with God's word. That's what it means to meditate. It's very easy to, if you're trying to read through the Bible in a year, maybe just to read through a huge passage and be like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm done, moving on. What if we were reading one verse even all week and just thinking about it, praying about it, meditating upon what God is trying to say to us in that? Meditate upon God's word. Let him speak to you through his Holy Spirit. Exactly. And he also says to speak the word. Go out in the world. You know, witnessing kind of makes most of us afraid. You know, it's like you don't want to offend somebody. You don't know what other people believe in that. But you know what witnessing is? It's talking. Who likes to talk in here? Can you talk to people? Oh, Tabitha raised her hand back there. So we, we can talk to people. And you realize when you start asking people questions about their life and about their beliefs, people love to talk about themselves too. And as you listen, be a good listener. Be a good listener to those people around you because God is putting opportunities in front of you every single day. Every single day. Are you listening? Are you ready to respond? Are you ready to give the word there? So we need to speak it. Not only do we need to read it, not only do we need to meditate and speak it, but we need to obey it. Apply it to your life. It's not any good if we're just reading it and going on and living like the world again. We should be drastically different from the rest of the world. So apply it. And you've got to know God's word to obey it, don't you? It's hard to obey God's word if you don't know it. You know, often in churches, we depend upon the preacher to tell us everything we need to know about the Bible. That's a dangerous thing. That is a very dangerous thing. We need to know God's word for ourselves to be able to obey it. That's why we have so many false religions in the world, because people just listen to a, a speaker, a preacher, or whatever the situation may be, instead of knowing God's word for themselves. Be like the Bereans. Paul was encouraged by the Bereans. He's like, they look at the word themselves and make sure that what I'm telling them is true. Y'all hold me accountable. Know the word yourself and know that what I'm speaking is true there. Then you're going to be prosperous in knowing God's word and being in his will there. You know, Israel had seen God's miracles. You think about when they came out of Egypt, all those plagues. You think about the Red Sea being parted. God leading them as a cloud of fire or just a cloud there. Giving them manna, providing for them, providing water in the midst of the desert. They had seen all these different miracles of God. They knew his abilities, but yeah, they still didn't trust him at times. We need to be confident in that what God has said he can do and what has, God has done. And you know, we're reminded in God's word. As we're in God's word, we're reminded of his strength. We're reminded what he can do and that he is with us. Be confident in God's abilities. When Jesus gave the Great Commission at the end of Matthew, when he told us to go out to all the nations and preach the word to make disciples, he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God is with us. That is the promise. He's with us in whatever. If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can conquer God? Who can defeat God? If God is with us, we have nothing to worry about there. So who should we fear? The psalmist says, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my strength. Nobody is mightier than God there. Have confidence in who he is. And be obedient to God. You know, it's not just about wearing a name tag that says I'm a Christian. It's not about just carrying your Bible around and saying that you're a Christian. Be obedient to him. Be different than the world. And be obedient. And the reason we can be obedient is because God's with us. You see these promises over and over again. The Holy Spirit's within us, helping us to be obedient and become more and more like him. Be strong and very courageous. This is actually one of the last things Moses said to Joshua before he died. He said, be strong and very courageous before you go to this task ahead of you. Don't be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Don't be distressed. And whatever the situation is, because God is with you too. Be strong and very courageous no matter what the situation is, is there. Promises. God has made us so many promises. I encourage you through this week, 
Just write down some of the promises that you can think of that God has given you. As you read his word, if you see another promise, write those things down and keep them in your Bible to realize God's never going to leave nor forsake us. He's with us, those promises. And in remembering that, be strong and very courageous. No matter what the situation is in your life there, it may, again, it may be a health thing, it may be a financial thing, it may even be people around you that are coming against you. Or it may even be a mental thing. Realize that you can be strong and courageous because God is with you. The Holy Spirit is equipping you. And meditate upon God's word. I can't stress that enough because we can rely upon our feelings. And you know what? Our feelings can lead us wrong. We need the solid foundation of God's word. So meditate upon it. Fill your mind and obey God. Because, you know, the enemy, he is well prepared. As Israel was waiting there to go into the promised land, they saw their enemy was well prepared. And they were worried about it. They had weapons. They had more than what Israel had. But remember, in our weakness, God is going to be glorified. So how do you respond to that? What is the situation in your life right now? How do you respond to the fact that God is with you? And again, this too is only for God's children. If there's anyone here that has not accepted Jesus as your Savior, these promises are not for you. These promises are not yours until you come to Jesus Christ and say, I am a sinner. I am separated from God. And the only way that I can receive these promises is trust Jesus for my salvation. Jesus is the only way there. So how do we respond to these promises? And are we remembering these promises as we go through the day? Be strong and very courageous. Lord, I thank you for your love for us and your mercies to be able to, to give us these promises, Lord. And I pray that you help us to to have a, a stronger faith, Lord, realizing that these promises are here along with us, Lord. That you are with us always. You'll never leave nor forsake us, Lord. Even when we are in those valleys, even in all those struggles, Lord. Maybe even struggles with sin, Lord. To realize that you have given us a way out of those things, Lord. We come to you just as we are, Lord. But you don't leave us that way. You make us more and more into your image every day, Lord. And I pray you just help us to trust you for what you have in our lives, Lord. You will never leave nor forsake us. Never leave nor forsake us. Help us be strong and very courageous. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.